So now we're going to be discussing with Nagesh sir. Uh, we're going to be discussing his favorite films, what he likes, what movies, the directors he's watched. So, so let's start with what are your five things that everyone should watch. I mean, based on your own taste, it doesn't have to. <laughs> you don't need to appeal to. Exactly. Masses. No, I I can't because there's a lot of these classics that people truly love, which doesn't do much for me. There was a time when I clearly had a top five that oh my god, you have to watch this. and uh, now i think it's gotten a little more diffuse but some of the old classics the first film which told me that i wanted to be a filmmaker was raiders of the lost ark believe it or not i saw that and i was like oh my god if a film can transport you to you know a space like this that's what i want to do but the one that sealed the deal was uh, terminator 2 i saw terminator 2 in 1991 when i was working as a chemical engineer and I literally walked out of the theater and I said, "Okay, I want to be a filmmaker." I'm no. I think I said, "I'm going to be a filmmaker." A little more dramatic. I think the want to be came with Raiders of the Lost Ark, and you know, going to be was this. And when I mentioned this story to a, a niece of mine, uh, there was a pause, and she said, "You know, what you're talking about and what you make have nothing in common, right?" <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, but no one's giving me the budget to make this." So. like movies which i think people absolutely should watch uh, the shawshank redemption oh my god that is just a classic for the ages i'd have to pick like five coen brother films <laughs> but maybe i'll stop with two raising arizona big lebowski oh my god it should be on people's must watch list probably kubrick's 2001 so freaking crazy and ahead of its time you mentioned glen gary glen ross david mamet Absolutely, you know. Periodically, I'll just go back and watch the scene where Alec Baldwin comes in and put that coffee down. Is coffee that, is only is for closers. Is that what you have written on your kurta? Which you which, is that the line? Put yeah. the coffee down. Coffee is only for uh, closers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah even the miles uh, from Raiders and the Lost. Not e- the miles. Exactly. The... Obviously, there was this time when I was, you know, absorbing films and everything. So back then, lines had much more power. now because i'm part of the process i can enjoy a film i can be blown away by it but i don't retain as much which is sad mm. i should be able to but back then you know when you're a sponge you're just absorbing every all the minutia magnolia paul thomas on anderson's magnolia that's in my top 5 of all time that uh, raiders terminator 2 shawshank i don't think has um, ever changed stuff comes and goes raising arizona was there but then i replaced it with big lebowski uh, you know things like that but as to my favorite directors right there are so many of them and i'm constantly in awe of the kind of work that they put out fincher is one who's now 25 plus years of just unbelievable work soderbergh not all soderbergh but definitely some of the stuff that he does is just incredible so of late has there been any movie that you really thought that this is a fucking good movie like they don't make them like this anymore the one which i saw recently and i was like you know that is something that i would dream of making was coda the one which won the uh, oscar last year okay for uh, a deaf family that has a hearing daughter Okay, it's an English film. It's an English film. It is out of the freaking world. And I just saw that recently. I saw it like a couple of weeks ago. What draws you to these directors? Is it, is it the subject matter? Is it how they handle their subject? Is it? If you look at the directors I've listed, okay, loosely my favorite directors, uh, the ones who occupied rarefied air, Kubrick, uh, Spielberg, Cameron, uh, Joel and Ethan Coen, Eastwood. and you look at the kind of stuff that they're making they're all different quirky brilliant to drama to big action picks advent so it's everything so i think i gravitate towards all the things that i know i cannot do easily okay then it leaves something for me to work towards something mm-hmm. to aspire for have you seen uh, doctor strange love and yeah. I mean it takes a certain mind to be able to write scenes like that and actually execute them right yeah writing a an and, and to make it funny and to make it land also so i i see that with kubrick i see that with spielberg with the coen brothers like they still have the same grammar in all their films right 
are you saying with reference to what I do or no, like their films? Their films. Not necessarily. I mean, they'll tackle, but yes, they have a certain quirkiness. Like yeah, the that's the word. That's close-ups right. with the dialogue, the way they spoken out. It's very like. But then they'll have serious stuff like a serious man mm. or inside Lewin Davis again, and early Coen Brothers is it's brilliance of another level. It's just stuff that is jaw dropping. The kind of stuff they were doing, which will be there for the ages. I think it's stuff that I realized that oh, I can't do that easily. Did you like Hail Caesar? No, I did not. Yeah. It was okay. Hmm. It and was okay. what about uh, Buster? The one on Netflix. Loved. That is vintage Corn Brothers, the Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Mm-hmm. That is vintage Corn Brothers. But uh, so the other directors you mentioned, they have a their scales are completely different. Like, uh, but the Coen Brothers are also not like the, as grand necessarily as. No, they're not, and yet they can tell tales in a way that I can't even fathom. Oh, so for them, what the thing that you appreciate about them is that the way they uh, story the storytelling. Absolutely. Not the scale and the execution. One hundred percent. Yeah, because and the the quirkiness of the writing. The way they think of characters, they have these elaborate dream sequences. I could just go on. I mean, they do so many mm. things differently. Yeah. The words out of the characters' mouth, it's like my God, it's genius. Anyways, it depends on how you uh, define genius, but it's it's this constant thing. You no, know, I mentioned Eastwood in that. Yeah. Because he's someone who doesn't care about the camera. It's just performance, and every actor works with. Eastwood says that oh, he a really call bad. Cut, right? He doesn't call cut. Yeah. He doesn't call action or doesn't call cut. But more importantly, the, very rarely does he does he shoot three takes. He's usually done. Usually, a lot of times he's done when he's re- when the actors are rehearsing. Oh. Yeah. When he mm. he shoots rehearsals when mm. actors are just rehearsing, he shoots rehearsals and he's done. Yeah. It takes all sorts, and sometimes I get a lot of courage from Eastwood saying. Okay, so I don't need to beat myself over the head that I don't have the visual grandeur, let's say, of Ridley Scott. I always come back to Ridley because his frames are just magnificent beyond yeah. belief. And I'm like, no, he showed tales that are fabulous, just with a beautiful simplicity about them. Performance, story, yeah. Thing, yeah. So, yeah, I love Mystic River. Like, I think that's oh, one of my top ten films. Unforgiven. Unforgiven. God, I'm forgiven. And he's still directing great. like a ninety. Yeah. God knows what. <laughs> Seriously, Seriously, it's just something else. Now you can see the chinks, but otherwise, what about Million Dollar Baby? Yeah, and oh my God! I think even after Million Dollar Grand Torino, Grand like, Torino that was, was my last film of his that I really liked. I agree. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I love Grand Torino. And Grand Torino is like, and I mean, also he's acting at ninety and directing like that's another. And what were Indian directors like? I mean, you grew up watching a lot of Telugu movies, also, right? Was so, it, does it, that play an influence in like the kind of stuff you? I'm sure it towards? did. There are two Indian directors I've always held in very high esteem: in Hindi, Rishkesh Mukherjee, and in Telugu, K. Vishwanath. And if you look at the way I handle the middle class, I guarantee there's influence from both these people, because I, I grew up as a middle class kid in India, so I view. a lot of the india that i see through a very middle class lens and i think unconsciously i have borrowed from these people because if you see both of these people told middle class stories in a very realistic way in a commercial setting they made films that were released to widespread audiences but the characters spoke very real if you look at a lot of my characters the way they speak they speak like real normal people do yeah so i think i'm sure i borrowed from these two filmmakers they so are this is what you kind of phenomenal. grew up on right before like the vhs came into your life absolutely i mean i grew up on the big ones like manmohan desai and uh, ramesh sippy and uh, prakash mehra and the the big hindi directors more than the big telugu directors i think there was a certain level of detachment when i saw them saying oh that's bollywood filmmaking that's not the kind of stuff i would make i can enjoy it hmm but it's not the kind of stuff that i would make there's a difference i think there was a certain level of detachment 
this stuff when i look at it i realize that at some level i thought oh this is the kind of stuff i could make okay so i think we are done now okay all right